So dyspnea. Dyspnea is complaint of shortness of breath. This is a subjective complaint. Now, when a patient comes to you complaining of dyspnea, what should you do? What we do is now that we do examination of the chest. We first of all we inspect and palpate the chest. Today we note down what happens if there are bilateral findings. For unilateral findings, we'll keep another session that how we proceed in unilateral findings. If the patient has symmetrical findings, what we see first, we see is the chest hyperinflated or not. Hyperinflation, you can see that the distance between the Adam's apple and the suprasternal knot is decreased. And you can see uh, the anthroposterior and transverse diameter they become equal. So chest is hyperinflated or chest is not hyperinflated. If the chest is hyperinflated, the chest movements overall are reduced or the chest movements are normal. So we see chest is hyperinflated, chest movements are reduced or chest movements or chest expression is all right. Then you see chest shows normal appearance but they are reduced movements and the second uh, thing is that the patient may have normal chest with normal chest movement. So this is what we see. Chest is hyperinflated or chest is not hyperinflated. If it is hyperinflated, there are reduced chest movements or there are normal chest movements. And then we have a normal chest with normal chest movement or reduced chest movement. So again keep in mind we are looking for bilateral findings. For unilateral findings, we'll have another session. Now, hyperinflated chest with reduced movements. This is usually caused by chronic obstructive pulmonary artery disease. For example, chronic bronchitis or chronic emphysema. So you may have uh, COPD as a cause of hyperinflated chest with reduced movements. So when you see this patient, look for the presence of wheezing. This may be present. Occasionally, we may hear uh, scattered preparation, but the main feature is the patient has wheezing. There is very small reversible component. If you nebulize the patient, do the PFTs before the nebulization. You nebulize the patient with salbutamol or albitrol, and then uh, do the pulmonary function testing again. You find there is small reversibility. So this is a sort of fixed obstruction with a minimal reversibility. And look for the presence of features of poor pulmonary. The patient may have raised JVP, there may be loud PT, there may be dependent edema. So if the patient has long-standing chronic obstructive airway disease, you may find the features of poor pulmonary in these patients. And then chest is hyperinflated with normal chest movements. The expansion of the chest is normal. This is seen in diseases which are purely airway obstruction and there is reversibility in that there is no problem with the compliance of the lungs. Compliance in these patients is normal. This is generally seen in asthma. In COPD, since there is associated emphysema as well in all patients because in COPD, there is a combination of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Some patients have more of chronic bronchitis, some have more of emphysema. So their lung compliance is affected. But in patients with asthma, lung compliance is not affected. Therefore, they have a normal chest expansion. Especially in acute phases, the chest may be very hyperinflated. But when they have a uh, asthma in control, you may not find any uh, abnormalities in the chest. The patient may appear normal if the asthma is under control. It is during the episodes of asthmatic attacks. The chest is hyperinflated, but still chest shows a uh, very good expression. Then you look for the presence of wheezing and demonstrate reversibility. That patient has a history of improvement in the symptoms spontaneously, or if you nebulize the patient with salbutamol, the symptoms not they improve. The pulmonary function test they also show that there is improvement in the pulmonary functions. Uh, the pulmonary functions which we look for uh, improvement is the, the FEV1 or peak flow rate. We check for the presence uh, of the improvement in uh, peak flow rate and FEV1. Then if the patient has normal chest with reduced movement, this generally indicates restricting diseases like pulmonary fibrosis, interstitial lung diseases. Patient has fine and inspiratory crepitations if they have pulmonary fibrosis. Then uh, there is a restriction defect on spirometry. That is the ratio of FEV1 to FEC is uh, 
increased. On radiology, you may see consolidation, perhaps there may be features of pulmonary edema or fibrosis on imaging of the chest, on chest X-ray or something on the CT scan, and the alveolar arterial oxygen gradient is usually high in these patients. And then the second distinctive disease is heart failure, especially if the patient has pulmonary edema. So there is a restrictive sort of effect because there is uh, problem with the compliance of the lungs, the lungs cannot expand because of the pulmonary edema. So, you've got restriction type of defects generally seen in the acute pulmonary edema. There may be abnormalities of pulse, for example, patient has tachycardia, there may be alternating pulse, or there may be other rhythm abnormalities. Patient may have features of fluid overload, like a raised JVP, large tender liver, or there is dependent edema. Patient may have uh, crepitations in the lung, which are fine and unstable crepitations. Sometimes very similar to the crepitations of uh, pulmonary fibrosis. And then you may have problems detectable in a uh, precordium. The patient may have displaced apex feet, and there may be an S3 or there may be an S4 gallop present. When you do a chest x ray, you may find a cardiac shadow which is enlarged, especially if the patient has systolic dysfunction. Or if the patient has diastolic dysfunction, the chest x ray may be normal uh, as far as the cardiac shadow is concerned, but you may find that there are some features of vascular congestion and echo gives us a good idea that patient has a diastolic dysfunction or systolic dysfunction or patient has both. So this is how, can, how we can go in patients who got heart failure. And then patients who got normal chest with normal chest movements and they are complaining of shortness of breath. So here we see anemia is the most important reason. But shortness of breath develops in patients if they have severe anemia or if they have developed anemia very acutely, for example, blood loss or hemolysis. Otherwise, in chronic anemia, if the patient has severe anemia, they develop shortness of breath. Otherwise, they don't have it. There are compensating mechanisms because of which patient doesn't feel short of breath. But if there is acute anemia, like hemolysis, the patient may develop short of breath. And then in pulmonary hypertension, patient complains of shortness of breath, chest examination tends to be normal, or you may find something in pre-cordial examination. There may be features of right ventricular uh, function involvement. For example, there may be right ventricular failure, there may be loud P2, or patient may have signs of right ventricular hypertrophy present. That is, parasternal lift may be present in these patients. So look for the presence of uh, Right particular hypertrophy, loud P2, and if there is right heart failure, this patient may be suffering from pulmonary hypertension. And then in pericardial diseases, patient may have features of right ventricular failure, that JVP is raised, there is congested liver, there may be edema, but the patient doesn't have loud P2 or there are no features of right ventricular hypertrophy. So this is what differentiates it from uh, patients who are having pulmonary hypertension. In pulmonary hypertension, the P2 is loud. Well, in Pericardial disease, the P2 is normal. You may have a pericardial knock, but the P2 is normal. And there are no features of right heart enlargement or hypertrophy in patients who got pericardial disease, but they are present in patients who got pulmonary hypertension. And then patient may have dyspnea because of raised intracranial pressure, for metabolic acidosis, and patients who got uh, hysterical breathing. So these are the different reasons patient may be having shortness of breath. So when you see a patient with shortness of breath, when you examine, and if the findings are symmetrical, you follow this algorithm. The patient, the chest is hyperinflated or not. If it is hyperinflated, patient has reduced movements or the chest movements are normal. And when you see patients who got uh, the chest which is not hyperinflated, there may be decreased chest movements and there may be normal chest movements. If there are decreased chest movements, it is a restricting disease like interstitial lung disease, or this may be because of the heart failure, especially acute pulmonary edema. And when the chest is normal and the chest movements are normal, the patient may be having anemia, patient may be having pulmonary hypertension, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension, patient may be having pericardial disease, there may be raised intracranial pressure, there may be metabolic acidosis, or patient may be having hysterical 